one of the key components of getting things done style task management is the idea of next actions, waiting for, read review, someday maybe, those things that I have uh, running down the left side here. Actually, you usually don't even use this way of getting to them because I get to them organically inside, but I have them there anyway as favorited pages. Uh, that Those concepts make sure that the appropriate tasks are elevated at the appropriate time. So for me, when I have uh, something, a task that needs to be done, I need to tag it with, uh, that needs to be done, you know, it's the next thing in line in a project or something that needs to be done very soon. And it doesn't have necessarily a due date associated with it, although I, it might, I could still tag it that way. I'm gonna tag it next, and I'm gonna tag it with the context at which I need to do it. Uh, so for instance, uh, let's just, uh, we've got Tom here from previous videos. Let's just make something new. Uh, let's say, um, build the new swing set. This is going to happen at my house here fairly soon. Um, we'll call it next. I'll throw it in the area of family. That's how I know it fits my priority. We'll make it a to-do. Um, normally, if I create a task immediately, I'm going to throw it in the inbox first. But for the purpose of showing this, I'll do this. Now I know that when I go over here to my next lists, because of the way that I have built my queries, Build the new swing set is right there on my next home list. Uh, and every day when I review this stuff, bam, bada bing, bada boom, <laughs> that was, uh, we are here uh, and it, it's there. And I do, and it's all set up where I need it to be. So to give you a sense of how this works, um, this is my query that I have built for this. Uh, it needs to be a to-do. It needs to be a tag next. It needs to be tagged home context. And it's not going to be something that shows up in my daily list, weekly tasks, monthly tasks, annual tasks, or it's not done. Now, strictly speaking, done and to-do are mutually exclusive, so I don't really need this here. Uh, but I guess call me uh, redundant in this case. I don't know why. It's not necessary. But what that guarantees is that when I click it, it's going to go away. Um, we'll undo that so you can see it. Um, the, these other things have to do with rec recurring tasks, which I will detail in the next video. This uh, concept here, then, uh, guarantees that the right things are going to show up in the right context. When I'm at home, uh, when I'm in my office, um, which I, you saw me, if, if you watched the other video, you saw me add computer to this one because I had uh, misprepared that a little bit. Um, so this is what I've done. I've just created these indented bullets, and that way I can have the appropriate thing there. Now, to give you an idea how this would work if you're building the query from scratch, um, I, you know, I could copy it or I could just give you a general idea of how it works. So a query, um, as most things of this type do, requires the double brace. A query is itself a page, and so it's going to sit inside there. A colon. Everything in a query, I guess not every, but any complex query is going to require an and statement. Um, in this particular case, uh, we know that we want something to be um, uh, a to-do. We want it to be uh, tagged next. And because this is our contact, you know, these are the next contacts I need to make, uh, it needs to be tagged contact. Uh, what we do not want it to be is several things. So we do not want it to be, and since it's several things, we need an or statement here. We do not want it to be anything from my daily tasks, or daily list rather, uh, my weekly tasks, my monthly tasks, or my annual tasks. And I won't bother with the done one, and you'll see it works just the same way here. So I've built out this query here, um, and now my next contacts are going to show up. Um, did I type the right thing in there? Did I type coaching? Because that shouldn't show. Oh, I did. I did it right. Um, oh, and I did. Oh, that's right. This is from. Sorry, I, I built this out earlier as I was testing. Something shows up here from April 28th, uh, previous made up coaching with Tom Smith. Um, I was going to go contact people about the position Tom would be applying for. So, uh, you know, I go back here and I can look and I can see, oh, here's our context for this. Um, I was going to scour LinkedIn for contacts at McGillicuddy Enterprises. I'm really great with making up names. And uh, those things are going to show up where they need to be. So in next contacts, um, I'm going to find that thing there and I'm going to uh, reach out and contact. This is really not a great example of task management. I would break it down more precisely to an actual person if I were going to throw next contact on that. 
but functionally speaking, you get the idea. And here under errands, I would build exactly the same query, except I would use, instead of contact, I would use errand as my thing there. And then whenever I need to run an errand, I think I built one, yeah, replace door tab, uh, doorknob and then patio door. That's not real. Our doorknob is fine. Uh, but if we were to do that, uh, then that's going to show up here. And I might, because I need to buy an exterior doorknob from Lowe's. That's going to show up there under my next errands. And so that's my next lists are all query built. I built that one from scratch just so you could see how queries work. Uh, but once you've built this, you don't have to do that. And, you know, it's worth mentioning. Maybe I'll say it in the last video too, just to kind of sum things up. It took me a little while to build this out because there was the concept of figuring out how I wanted to do it. And I'm sure this isn't the only valid way of doing it. I don't mean to suggest that. But it took me a while to figure out how it was going to work for me. <laughs> that said, uh, the actual using of it, the actual buildings of it took no time at all. I rebuilt this in a new account so I could demonstrate it for you. And that took about 15 minutes. Uh, and so it wasn't, it isn't, it, the, the system is not complex. It's just, uh, you know, it takes a little while to figure out, but this is not hard to do. And because you can copy and paste like I just did with those queries, once you've built it once, uh, it works fine. And, and, you know, honestly, hopefully you can maybe pause the screen or something if you want to see how the functionality of that works because uh, it's it's not intuitive. I'm sure that that's something that's eventually going to be more intuitive, um, though the the sort of programming nerd in me. I'm not a programmer, by the way. I'm a musician, a uh, musician and a, and a theater person uh, who just happens to love math and programming and building things and taking things apart, and all of that. Um, and that that's that was my that was my where my background is music and theater. I've been doing uh, coachings. Uh, productivity coaching, communication coaching for uh, several years now. Uh, but uh, my background is not in programming, uh, just for the record. But it's so it's not like it's, you know, it's not unlearnable by any means. Uh, it's just it's just not necessarily intuitive when you see it for the first time. Same functionality over here on the waiting list. Um, I've already built this query. Uh, if it's going to be something that's to do and waiting, but not in the weekly tasks, I exclude that because as you can see on my recurring task, it shows up down here in the linked references. It won't in the query. So say, for instance, I've made that contact to somebody here, um, and now I, but I just left a message, so I'm waiting for them to call me back. Uh, I throw waiting on that. <laughs> that was clumsy. Uh, and I would probably also throw a waiting for attribute um, here. I need a hyphen, of course, either way. Um, waiting for callback from Larry. That's not how you spell Larry. Larry Larison. Um, and so that's going to be there. I would then remove next from that because I don't want it showing up both places. It's going to disappear from here, but it will show up over here on the waiting for list. So when I review that, uh, that's, that's going to show up where it needs to be. You can see, as I mentioned at the beginning, you got to tag pretty uh, specifically. But once you've built out the tags, it isn't complex. I don't have very many. I, you notice I use the at to build these out. That's it. That's all the at ones there are. Um, there aren't very many. Uh, and I mean, you can have as many or as little as you want. But this allows me to uh, keep track of things. I know when I hit at, I'm going to hit something related to my task management. Uh, and it's not going to be some, some other random version. I can have other next uh, or home or whatever attributes uh, pages elsewhere that don't have an at and they have different meaning as a result and they're not tied into my task manager. So that's how that functions uh, for those. Uh, one quick note uh, here about how I might use the next list for daily planning. Uh, I would take it here, bring it up, um, I would swing it over to the sidebar, uh, and then I would go to my day and maybe I would say, you know what, I got a chunk of time. This would be in the morning. This is not something I would prep it, prep it in advance more than the day, the day before at most, and usually the day of. Maybe I'd say, oh, you know, I got a chunk of time here at uh, 2 o'clock. Um, let's see what I have. I'll be in my office. Um, you know what, let's write that recommendation letter for Tom. So let's embed here um, Tom's recommendation letter. Uh, we'll put that in there. Um, you can also, and you know what, while I'm at it, let's also create how-to videos uh, for for this stuff. Hello, look, I'm already doing that. Uh, we'll create these how-to videos. Here's another way you can do it. You can uh, copy the block reference um, and just start typing embed and just 
put the reference in there. It'll come with its two parentheses attached. And then those things will show up uh, here in this moment. Why embed? Because when I do this, it's going to be, it's going to go, go away from the next list. So it's, it's fully integrated uh, with, with the other part. If I do the reference, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't come over as smoothly. If I embed it like this, it's super easy to then uh, click it off here. It'll disappear from the next list. It'll be logged in here that it was done this day at this time. I don't always get this specific um, with the, de the, the time. It, it just depends on necessity. But the embedding I find to be extremely useful uh, because that means it's going to retain that link uh, and, and it, it amplifies the power of the queries uh, that I've built on those other pages. So that's, that's how I uh, use next actions. That's how I used waiting for. That's how I use queries to build those. And that's how I use embedding tasks. If there is something I want to plan out specifically on a specific day, embedding makes that really, really, really simple. So I hope that's useful to you. And now the next video, I'm actually going to address how I handle recurring tasks. That's the most complicated. It's not complicated, but that's the most uh, critical component because that's a feature uh, that is not otherwise replicated uh, in moving from Todoist and moving over here. Uh, that allows me to, uh, my recurring task uh, process allows me to take care of something I wouldn't otherwise be able to solve.